Hi, I'm Stephanie from Museums.Love. Today we're going to take a look at gender and sexuality in ancient art. We're going to look inside Berlin's Altus Museum to see a statue of one of the very few transgender individuals that's represented in ancient art. What can this tell us about ancient Greek society? And what can it tell us about our modern society today? Let's go inside and take a look. A word of caution before we begin. Ancient ideas about sex can be shockingly foreign. In particular, we'll learn in this video that both genitalia and sexual assault were thematized in myth and art in ways that some viewers might not be comfortable with. If you decide that this video isn't for you, we hope to see you another time. This statue of Hermaphrodite reveals certain aspects of Greek and Roman culture that are still too little researched and talked about. This is one of the few transgender individuals that we have from antiquity who's well recorded with both male genitalia and female breasts. Although Hermaphrodite's breasts aren't very prominent, we can be sure that the Greeks would have recognized this body type as transgender if we compare the statue to Greek statues of people of other genders. The typical handsome man statue in Greece has an unmistakably muscular physique understood as the pinnacle of masculinity. By contrast, Hermaphrodite's body more closely resembles the soft physique of pubescent boys, a favorite subject in Greek art. This softness distances Hermaphrodite, just like the statues of youths, from the masculine ideal. And in Hermaphrodite's case, the emphasized breasts bring this body type even closer to the feminine ideal that Greek viewers would have recognized. So who is the Hermaphrodite depicted in this statue? According to the myth told most memorably in Ovid's Metamorphoses, Hermaphrodite or Hermaphroditus was born male as the son of the gods Hermes and Aphrodite. One day, walking in the woods, he is spied by the water nymph Salmachus. Salmachus immediately falls in love with Hermaphrodite and tries to woo him unsuccessfully. Hermaphrodite runs away and, when he thinks he's safe, goes for a swim in a forest lake. Here Salmachus catches him, slithering around his body in the water, squeezing him so tightly that when she prays to the gods to never be parted from him, the gods merge their bodies. Ovid says they became not two, but a twofold form, so that they could not be called male or female, and seemed neither one nor the other. This seems to me a clear story of sexual assault with a supernatural end, but it has been romanticized in art for millennia. This statue might have been used as a cult statue, that is, it was worshipped in religious rituals. That's something we know too little about. What is clear is that representations of Hermaphrodite change over time, from the cult statue to in the Hellenistic period, where the body seems to be emphasized as something surprising or even humorous. Here, in the statue of Hermaphrodite with a satyr, a mythical wilderness figure, we see the satyr turning away from Hermaphrodite, trying to free himself. This is supposed to be a comic reversal of roles, since normally the satyr is the one assaulting and the other figure is trying to get away. Scenes of a satyr accosting others are numerous in Greek and Roman art. They were even used as decoration in luxurious Roman villas. Sure, they are meant to show the satyr's wild nature as a contrast to good behavior among humans. But this is still a powerful indicator of how alien ancient values can be for us. To our way of thinking, this sort of scene is obviously not used as decoration. It's more likely to be seen as downright traumatizing. And in the statue group with Hermaphrodite, part of the intended joke is at Hermaphrodite's expense. The satyr is horrified to discover a body that doesn't conform to his expectations. Now here, the head has been replaced in the modern period, so that does not belong to the original statue, but it would have been an androgynous style of head to go along with the female breasts and the male genitalia that are common to Hermaphrodite. But the satyr's surprised reaction tells us another thing about how Hermaphrodite was seen in antiquity. Surprise and laughter, especially when associated with male genitals, were thought to protect against evil spirits. This is common in Roman society that laughter, especially, is something thought to avert the evil eye. Maybe the thinking is, if the evil eye hears loud noises, it runs away and can't hex you. We think that this is the case with loud noises, not only laughter, but also bells that the Romans hung in their houses, often accompanied by charms of male genitalia. In fact, genitals as a source of humor are central to what we know of ancient Greek humor. You might know the story of how Persephone was abducted to the underworld by Hades, but maybe you didn't know that Persephone's mother, Demeter, the goddess of the harvest, mourned the absence of her daughter to such an extent the crops didn't grow and mankind was starving. So how did Demeter snap out of her mourning? Thank goodness she ran into some maidens at a well who told her a dirty joke. 
Unfortunately, we don't know what the dirty joke was, but we know that it made Demeter laugh, and that's what snapped her out of her blues so that mankind could eat again. The ancient idea that transgender bodies could produce laughter, and the idea that laughter and male genitals avert evil, might hint that hermaphrodite was considered to have protective powers, even if at other times they were just considered laughable. The figure of hermaphrodite can show us how transgender individuals were treated in antiquity and today with a certain degree of uncertainty. Research today might refer to hermaphrodite as he, even though this only reflects the biological gender at birth and not the transformation later that is so significant to this character. Other studies might include studies of hermaphrodite in the category of disability studies, even though transgender individuals tend not to see their gender as a disability. At the end of the day, we can say there's still a lot of work to be done here. As ever, it's not just the ancient work of art that tells us about ancient society, but the way it's displayed that tells us about our own. The Hermaphrodite statue is just one example of many more. Go on museums.love to find out more examples, more photos, links, anything else you want to know. I'll see you there.